Well, Dr. Sangvid, Dr. Viviano, uh, and audience, uh, today I want to give you our early experience with the introduction of uh, prostate hyphen to the United States. As we all know, uh, FDA approved uh, HIFU for both devices uh, in the latter part of 2015. And I'll bring your attention to the training caveat placed by, uh, by the agency. The training must be provided so that upon completion of the training program, physicians can use the safety features, target the intended tissue, and perform the ablation in a manner that minimizes damage. So safety is an important consideration here. In the United States, Vitero Health was formed as, a, uh, as an entity to uh, acquire and deploy the technology, really developed very strict uh, training standards, uh, stressing peer-to-peer uh, -peer proctoring uh, and mentorship, provide technical engineering support and clinical applications assistance, and really, very importantly, to establish a way to track data uh, and outcomes. And you'll see the first effort, uh, efforts at this. Our training model really includes uh, uh, really a, a series of uh, didactic online, uh, but really an important uh, physician uh, uh, proctorship peer to peer. In our uh, patient series, uh, the sonoblate device was used, MRI fusion was used on many of the cases. Uh, we, we favor using a 3T MRI to confirm staging as well as to uh, uh, design with uh, treatment uh, planning. Uh, and you'll see some experience with focal ablation, hemiablation, uh, some total gland uh, cases in which the urethra is totally spared, as well as uh, we've uh, liberally used the pre hifu TRP procedure, uh, simple, uh, similar to what Dr. Chaucey just spoke about. Uh, the MRI fusion workflow, I think a lot of people are familiar with, but the MRI images are contoured, they're imported into the treatment device, fused to the ultrasound, and that's used to help define the treatment plan. Our initial experience began on December 4th of 2015. These procedures are all done on an outpatient ambulatory surgery basis. Uh, general anesthesia is used. All patients had do biopsy documented prostate cancer. And so that's certainly how we're using the technology. Uh, MRIs were used. Uh, and there are some patients in the series with MRI evidence of T3A disease, that is capsular involvement. There's no use of uh, hormonal therapy, uh, and uh, the 3G platform with MRI fusion was utilized. 114 procedures have been performed uh, at our center in the United States to date. Uh, of those, 107 have been primary. Uh, there are seven salvage cases, one with a brachytherapy failure, and six cases in which patients had previous HIFU over the ensuing years. Uh, there were 43 uh, patients in which the whole prostate was treated with a TURP prior to the HIFU. Uh, there was uh, six cases in which the urethra was uh, significantly spared in the central zone. Uh, there were 23 cases of hemiablation and 42 cases of focal ablation with MRI fusion. So you can see that uh, around 60% of the patients are either hemi or focal patients. If we look at a whole gland experience, the patients were between 50 and 78 years of old age. Procedural time is about two hours and 45 minutes. These patients all had a pre hifu terp. In most cases, a few of the patients had a laser vaporization, although my preference has been to do a TURP. The bladder neck was spared uh, on every one of these patients at the time of the procedure. These patients all were treated with a Foley catheter with an average catheter time of around seven days. The PSAs have declined nicely at three months. I will stress that we're sparing some tissue around that bladder neck, uh, but our PSA nadir is uh, too soon to assess oncologic effects. But the IPSS scores, the voiding scores, have really uh, been um, uh, very nice with a pre-score of 8.9 post slight increase in voiding symptoms at three months. The erectile function score showed about a 30% decline at three months. But of import, 98% uh, of patients by three months are pad-free and leak-free. Very interestingly, the endoscopic surgical intervention rate is only one patient out of 43 in this series for a 2.3% rate. And that, that's quite unusual. Uh, this, that one patient did require a cystoscopy with a laser stone uh, um, treatment for necrotic tissue. There have been no strictures or bladder neck contractures in this series of patients. There have been six patients who had the entire central urethra spared. This took a little less time to do, two and a half hours. The PSA is a slightly higher PSA because more tissue is being spared. But you can see very nicely unchanged symptom scores, voiding symptom scores, and really no significant change in the ED scores, although the follow-up is short. 
This is what that looks like. The central urethra is spared in those patients. If we look at the uh, catheter time, again, about seven days, the pad-free, leak-free rate's 100%. There's been one patient there that had some residual necrotic tissue that required operative debridement uh, for a one out of six rate of an intervention, but there have been no strictures or bladder neck contractures at all. Our hemiablation experience includes 23 patients. Average catheter time, again, about six and a half days. Uh, the PSAs have declined nicely in the hemiablation series from 6.75 down to 1.2. The symptom scores by three months have declined. Our IIEF scores, erectile function scores, really are unchanged at the three-month mark. And again, there's been no intervention surgically. There's been no strictures or contractures, and the patients are uniformly continent. It takes about two hours to do that procedure. That is a uh, look at the coronal view in the bottom left. You'll see what a hemiablation looks like on the treatment planning device. The focal experience is where I think a lot of the future is. Of course, that we're using MRI fusion with margins up to 10 millimeters in the higher grade diseases. These patients have stage T1C to up to T3A by MRI disease. Uh, 35 patients were primary focal treatments. The salvaged patients were all done focally, and that's of interest. The procedure time is about two hours. There's some time involved in treatment planning. In terms of outcomes, the PSAs declined very nicely at three months from 8.5 down to 2.6. The uh, IPSS scores, voiding scores, really are unchanged at three months. There's a slight decrease in the IIEF scores, erectile function scores, but the Foley catheter time is under five days. And again, no endoscopic surgical interventions, and the continence rate has been uniformly completely continent. It takes about an hour and a half to do those procedures. So this has been the scope of what we've done over the first uh, seven to eight months uh, in Sarasota, showing initial good PSA response, too soon to predict, obviously, oncologic effects. But the side effects, the morbidity side, has been extremely low. The patients are uniformly continent. There's been a 1.7% surgical intervention rate. Uh, I really believe that a pre hifu terp has really helped significantly, avoiding the use of an SP tube in these patients and a catheter time of only one week. And I believe that fusion biopsy and MRI-guided fusion allows for a very personalized approach based on the tumor burden as well as the location while able to minimize side effects. Thank you for your attention. Dr. Sianti, very quick question. What is your exclusion criteria? I think size becomes an issue, calcification becomes an issue, and obviously clear, we've avoided patients with clear extra prostatic disease. I don't really have a Gleason grade exclusion. Um, it's really, I think, tumor volume, burden, location. As an ablationist, if I can get energy and in sufficient intensity to the target and it's localized, then I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that uh, a higher Gleason grade is necessarily uh, going to uh, be a worse patient. They'll have a higher chance of failing, of course, any treatment.